sure some of you are wondering, with the bad weather, would there be any extensions on the deadline of the homework assignments? And actually, no. Uh, in fact, I am pushing up the due date because that gave you a lot of time to work on it over the last few days. So actually, it was you're all late, I think. So, no, I'm just kidding. Um, if you need an extension, let me know. <laughs> and we can talk about it. You know, I am not... Giggity, uh, giggity. I am not quite the stickler like some folks are about due dates. I appreciate that. I would rather see things done well than rush to turn something in. All right. Now, that gets me in trouble. Well, I won't say it gets me in trouble. <laughs> it sometimes gets my students in trouble because if they take that as a... Um, um, yeah, if they, if, they, if, they, if, they, if, they, if that becomes too much of a crutch, let's put it that way. But I do really recognize that circumstances come up, and, and so therefore I, I try not to be too hard line on that. But again, I guess the way I see it is if you're getting the assignments done and on time, then you're doing well in the course. If not, then if it's a one-time thing, okay, it happens. If it, if it continues to happen, then, then you need to either get with me or think it through yourself and see what you, what you can do to uh, to get more caught on. All right, we're going to continue talking about um, SQL statements and integrating them into um, ASP.NET. Now, if I'm not mistaken, and it's funny, we've only had a little bit of time off, but already it's like, what were we talking about again? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, what we were talking about is we were doing just basic one table queries and showing the results in there. And so we had talked about, and correct me if I'm wrong, select statements looking like select, then a list of columns from a table. Did we review this? No, we, we did not. We have not talked about SQL statements. Okay. All right. Well, that's why, because we use the uh, we use just the, uh, the, the the sort of query builder built within ASP.NET to to talk about that. Anyhow, queries are are select statements in SQL, and the very basic form of them, the one that we've been using, and in fact, if you look close, it will you can you can actually see this in your code is select. Then you have a list of columns from, and then you have in our case, you have a single table. All right. An asterisk is a shorthand for every column. So if I say select star from customer, that will show me every column in the customer table for every row. In general, the way SQL statements work are as follows. Unless you specify everything, let me rewind. Unless you specify specifically what you want, it will give you everything. All right, that's what I meant to say. I kind of started saying that backwards. Unless you specify what you want specifically, it will give you everything, as far as every row. All right. So if I say select star from customer, how many customers will I get? I'll get them all because I haven't specified which customers I want. All right. So we can select columns by putting a list or an asterisk. And the way that we select rows is by adding a where clause. where state equals Ohio, for example. That way we're not seeing every single customer, but we're filtering out and only showing those customers that are in the state of Ohio. And we can make more involved conditions. We could say where state equals Ohio and, Cle and, and city equals Cleveland, so that we would get you know, only Cleveland, Ohio. We wouldn't get Elyria, Ohio. We wouldn't get Cleveland, Mississippi. All right. Um, Lastly, for now, anyhow, we can do an order by clause, which is a way
way of, of organizing the output and the sort the output. So I could say uh, order by City, last name, first name. And what it will do is it will sort by city. So Akron would be near the top of the list. The secondary and tertiary sorts come in as far as within that category. So within all the Akrons, they will be sorted by last name. So an Adams from Akron would be near the top of the list. Akron would be the near, near the top of the list of cities. Within the city of Akron, Adams would be near the top of, of that. And then lastly, by first name. So Aaron Adams from Akron would probably be the top person on the list. All right? Maybe not, but probably. All right. The typical, the, the default sort is to, to go descending. No, ascending. In other words, from lowest to highest. So if we were to sort by age, we would get the youngest people on top to the oldest people. In terms of uh, alphanumeric fields, when we talk about ascending, it's, it's alphabetical order. So the A's are considered to be lower than the B's and so on, a lower number. All right. We can reverse that and say descending if we want to, and sometimes that's useful. For example, if we wanted to rank a group of customers by sales, for you know, for example, we might want to see the highest, uh, the, the 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 customer that purchased the most on top, you know, and then down to the to the less, uh, to to the the lesser customers that didn't buy quite as much. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build on the example we had last time because what I want to do is I want to do a little bit of SQL and then do a little bit of ASP.NET. So this time through, though, we are going to um, type in the SQL statement ourselves to get more practice, as opposed to picking the SQL statement from, um, from using the Query Builder. So let's go and let's bring up the project we were working on last time, and we'll add some SQL statements to it. Yes? I did figure out what was wrong. Apparently, there wasn't something installed when I installed the uh, one of the programs in there, so it wouldn't let me access any of the databases. Okay, good. Um, usually, uh, you know, and, and that's a good point. Um, if folks are working on this on their own machine and you're having difficulty with something. Um, it is likely some sort of installation configuration issue. Um, and, and working through to debug that and to find it is, is actually pretty valuable experience. Uh, in a lot of these cases, in a, in a modern software environment, because so many components are involved, actually configuration a lot of times is a big part of the battle, getting everything configured right and, and set up right and, and so on. Um, I teach the uh, Android development class. And really, you know, setting that up is tricky because there's a whole bunch of things that all have to talk to each other for you to, 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 to get your things going. And if something isn't talking to each other right, then you're doomed and you're not going to be able to do that. So it is a valuable experience to work through those things. I, you know, I almost wish the labs were such that, you know, I could periodically mess something up so that you'd have to practice um, fixing the configuration. But if you do it on your own, then you have your own opportunity uh, to do that. All right, let's pull down the example. And I don't remember. Oh, yeah, this is a human resource one.
troubleshooting those um, problems. One suggestion I have as the first thing you should do is copy and paste any error message that you get into Google. All right. Very often you'll see you're not the only one that has that problem. That'll do one of two things for you. First of all, it may help you solve your problem because if you're not the first person to have the problem, maybe you won't be the first person to solve it. Someone else has solved it for you. Secondly, even if it doesn't help you solve it, it'll make you feel better to feel that you're not the only one that has this problem. Admittedly, that really ultimately doesn't matter, but I don't know. It's one of them misery loves company sort of things. again that, that we uh, don't like about this. First of all, it <clears throat> doesn't show the department uh, name. So that's one thing that we want to fix. Second thing is, is again, because I'm lazy, I only put in a couple of people. But if you could imagine, there was even a small company with, you know, a few hundred people. Um, you wouldn't necessarily want to always display everyone. Chances are you're looking for someone specific. All right. Um, could you imagine you go to Amazon and you want to do some shopping and it had to load every single item on the web page for you. It's ridiculous. It wouldn't work. You got to narrow it down somehow. What are you really interested in? And so you pick a category or you pick a title or an author or whatever and you just get a, a smaller list that you can work with. So, what I'm going to do, first of all, is we're going to build some code in here to allow us to look up by name and find the information about the, 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 the person. All right? So, we're going to do a search by name because right now it, it pulls up everyone. All right? We don't want it to pull up everyone. We only want it to pull up some specific person. All right? So, that'll be our first task for here. Um, we might have to add some data to really make sure that it works, all right? Uh, but we'll, 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 we'll do that as, as we're working through this. So that'll be our first task. Now, in terms of design, all right, if we wanted to do a search based on name, let's say, let's think about what we need to do in terms of our user interface and in terms of of our programming logic. All right. In terms of our user interface, we're going to need to have a text box to place a name in. All right. We're going to need a button to get the ball rolling. All right. That's the other thing that we need. Lastly, as far as the programming logic, we're going to need to alter that SQL statement. Right now, if we look at this SQL statement, you'll see that the SQL statement says, I guess we can look at it here as well. The SQL statement says, select star from employee. Again, about as basic of a SQL statement as you can have. We're going to select every column from the employee table. Which rows are we going to get? We're going to get all of them because we haven't specified which, which rows we want. We haven't specified the criteria that we want to select. So we want them all. So this SQL statement is going to need to change. All right. What are we going to need to add to the SQL statement to only pull up a particular person or uh, to, to pull up a, a, only the people whose name matches 
um, what we've keyed in. What do we need to add to that SQL statement? Where clause. Where clause, right. Because we're narrowing it down, we're filtering, and we're saying we don't want everyone, we only want those employees that meet this criteria. So when you have meeting some criteria in selecting rows from a database, that's a where clause. All right. Now, let's, let's think for a second about what we want this SQL statement to look like. Right now, it's this. Right now it's this. So we know we need a WHERE clause and I was really disappointed, Susan, that you weren't here at the beginning of class because I, I mentioned that because we had a couple days off as far as the deadline for the assignment, well, I'm actually making it due sooner because you had all that extra time to work on it. I was just joking, of course, but I, I'm guessing I would have got a, a good reaction out of you on that. I'll watch it on the video. Okay. Well, yeah, now, now I spoiled it. Yeah. All right. So the cow name is amp name. What do we want our where clause to look like? Where amp name equals something, right? Now, what is that something going to be? Well, it depends on, you know, it depends on what we've typed in the text box. So we want that essentially to be a blank that we're going to fill in at runtime. I can't put in a value right here, and I can't say where employee equals Mike. I can't hard code that, right? Because, you know, today I'm looking for Mike, tomorrow I might be looking for Joe or Pete or whoever, all right? So therefore, I kind of have to leave that SQL statement have a blank in it. And that blank is going to be filled in at runtime. Right? If I want Mike, I'll say warm, while it, why, uh, where employee name equals Mike. If I want Joe, it'll be where employee name equals Joe. And whatever that value is, that'll get filled in at runtime. In other words, this query has a parameter associated with it. It's not like the query we had the first time that every single time it gives us the same thing. Uh, every single time that original query we had gives us all the employees in the employee table. Now we're saying we want to filter out and only show some of the employees, but we want to save that criteria, save the, the entering of that criteria until runtime. In other words, we're, we're not always going to pull up the same person or people or the same name. We're going to put that in at runtime and that will be used then to filter out uh, in the query the, uh, the, the people that we want. Now we're going to do this one better though because what would be wrong with doing an equal in the query? What's wrong with saying name equals something? Well, not necessarily you can only find one. It has to be an exact match. All right? So in other words, if I was going to search for, uh, let's say, what would be a good one? If I was looking for, yeah, well, let's, let's say P. If I put in where name equals Pete, if the person's name was Peter, it wouldn't show up as a match, right? Because Pete is not the same as Peter. All right. And likewise, you could do that with any name, nicknames, or whatever. Not to mention the fact that if this was a real application and we had the, you know, we, we were putting in last names as well, you know, is it Don Huffman, H-U-F-M-A-N, or H-U-F-F-M-A-N, or 
H-O-U-G-H-M-A-N, or whatever. Maybe I'd want to search for Don H instead, just to be safe, and pull up everyone whose name started with Don, uh, Don H, and then I could pick the person that I wanted. So we want to do an approximate match in this case. Now again, you have to make the design, uh, the design decision, do you want an exact match or an approximate match? Generally speaking, if it's a freeform text field and a person isn't going to be completely sure on how the data is, is going to be entered, um, then it's, it's good to make it an approximate match because that will give the person a chance to, uh, to, to find it even if their, their um, uh, entry isn't exactly right. You know. And again, we can think of this like for book titles, for course titles, and, and so on. So, we don't use equal for that. Equal means an exact match. What do we use for, um, what do we use for um, an approximate match like that from, uh, in, in a SQL statement? Anyone recall? We use a like. So I could say, "Were employee name like Don H?" The percent sign in this statement represents a wild card. In other words, it would it would match anything that started with Don H, no matter what the letters after. We can put a wild card in the beginning, or we can put the wild card at the end, or we can put the wild card both. Suppose you can put it somewhere in the middle, too, but typically you're looking for the wild card in the beginning or the end. So this will look for uh, everything that had Don H in it, and even if it was entered in as Mr. Don Huffman, it would match if I put the, the, the wild card at the beginning as well or Professor Don Huffman, all right? Whereas if I did this, that would match Don Huffman, H-U-F-F-M-A-N, and Don Huffman, H-U-F-M-A-N, but it wouldn't match Professor Don Huffman, because in this case we're saying we only want it if the Don is at the very beginning of the string. So if you typed in Donald, that If I typed in Donald, like this, then it would match anything that started with Don Old H, it, and it would not match Don H. Okay. So that whatever's there has to be exact. Match. Whatever's there has to, yeah, it has to match exactly, right. So that would be a case where the percent sign, the wild card, would be useful right after Don if we put Don. It, it, it could be. Yeah, usually what, what I would suggest doing, because that would, you never know where someone would want to put that in the statement. So what I would suggest is do it either before, uh, you know, where it makes sense, either either just, be, just at the end or just at the beginning or before and after, all right? And then it, it's, it's up to the person to type in the part of that that they will, they will know, you know. All right, so let's go and let's build this search into the program. Remembering that we're not always searching for Don Hoffman. Yes? Can the user type in a wild card character? That's a good question. I'm guessing they could. And we could, we'll play with that. We'll see. I'm guessing they could, but uh, that could get very confusing for them. All right, we'll, we'll try that, though. All right, we'll, we'll try that. Okay. We want to, we want to do a search for employees where their name is like something, some value. And that value we're going to get from the text box on our page. All right. Again, I think it's always good to sort of think this through before you actually go and do it, all right, um, as opposed to just opening up and starting programming. Think what you need to do on the user interface side. Think of what you need to do on the coding side. Are we, need to, are we going to need to do anything with our grid view? All right. Remember, with, 
with these database things on the page, we have a data source and we have a grid view. The data source is where the data is coming from. It's effectively our hook to the database. Um, the grid view is how we're presenting that data. Do we have to change anything in the grid view? What do you hope the answer is? No. You hope the answer is no, right? You hope that you can accomplish this change with as minimal amount of coding changes as possible. And that is the case. You don't have to change that. And why? Well, because the way that ASP.NET does this data access, you have the data source class that's responsible for pulling the data that's needed. And then you have the um, visual class. The, in our case, the grid view, which is responsible for showing the data the way that we want. Now, we're not showing it any differently, right? We're still showing a list of people. The only difference we're making is we're applying some criteria into retrieving those people. We're not retrieving everyone. We're retrieving only people based on the value of a text box. Therefore, we don't need to make any changes to the grid view. We're still going to display a list of people that match that name, all right? The only difference being that um, we're pulling different data. We have criteria on it. So, yes? If you were to change your select so you selected another field, mm -hmm. would you have to change the grid field? If you wanted to see that field, you would. All right. Um, it doesn't automatically. No. Uh, it, it will ask you if you want to regenerate it, but if you do, then any of the customization that you've done uh, gets, gets overwritten. So if I went and changed the headings and all that, it's smart enough to know that um, you've made a change to the SQL statement. It will ask you if you want to recreate the, uh, the uh, grid view columns, and if you do, it wipes out any custom thing that you've done. Again, you have to make that call on an individual basis. All right, so let's go in and let's add to this our text box and our button. I'm going to call this guy text name. And I'm going to go and add a button. To this. Now we have our text box and our button. Last thing we have to change is this. So we'll go into configure, configure uh, data source. Refresh schema, by the way, is what does what you said, sort of refreshes, and if we added any columns to select, it would, it would refresh the schema, and then it would, it would eliminate any custom changes we made to this grid view, and it would add any new fields that we had in. Occasionally, you do have to do that. All right, configure data source, HR database, that's the right one. Connection string, yep, that's right. Oops, I think I hit the next one too many times. There we go. Now, we picked, if you remember, just to say, give me everything from the employee table, and, and that's the SQL statement that it generated, the one like I had up on the board. All right. Now, I'm going to click specify a custom SQL statement or stored procedure because I want to sort of take the bull by the horns in this case and, and write my own code for this. I actually could accomplish this um, using the 